And we are live. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Bunker Office Hours, a weekly live show brought to you by the team at Bunker Labs, a national network of veteran and military spouse entrepreneurs dedicated to helping the military connect the community start their own business. I'm your host, Iron Mike Stedman, joined today by my co-host, Amy Morrison, and our special guest, Schmid Etienne. What's going on, Amy and Schmid? Howdy. How are you? So full transparency, y'all, we actually started at the top of the hour, but we realized that we weren't streaming on the back end. So we decided to pause, restart over, because this is just such an important topic for today. You know, stress management, especially with everything that's going on in our community, um, the veteran community. And so I just want to make sure we do it right. So apologize if we're starting a little later. But, yo, we're like y'all. This is very entrepreneurial. So we're trying to create a product that brings value to the community. And we appreciate y'all's patience uh, with us. Now, uh, first, though, let's talk about what's going on in the bunker. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Amy to give updates on uh, what's taking place the next few weeks. Cool. Um, so today we have two events, two in-person events. So we've got a Bunker Connect in Knoxville, Tennessee uh, this evening at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And then we have another in-person Bunker Connect in Tampa. Uh, that one is this evening at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. And then you can check out uh, chapters.bunkerlabs.org for uh, events, upcoming events, because there's a couple of upcoming events after that as well. Now, Amy, we know it's been a very kind of stressful time for people. Why is it important for our community to get out and participate in these in-person uh, events? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I think, um, you know, we've all been a little cooped up lately. So I think getting out there, getting uh, connecting with the people in your community, uh, like minded individuals, uh, especially as entrepreneurs, you know, get out there, get that networking on, uh, you know, see what you can do for other people, what they can do for you. Uh, you know, the connect. <laughs> it's what we're all about here. Yeah. So take advantage of it. I just want to encourage people to do it. Um, don't go at this thing alone. And the other thing, like I was saying, is uh, I'm in my incubator space. I got my little podcast studio right here in downtown Newark. I'm in this space all the time, literally by myself, okay? And one of the reasons we wanted to get uh, Schmidt on is, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world. We got COVID-19, which has been here forever, it feels like. We had yes. Afghanistan happen, okay? And then we've got the the day-to-day -day stress of being an entrepreneur's taking care of ourselves personally and professionally. So there's just, there's a lot going on. And when you add it all together, it can be overwhelming. And one of the things that you as a community have been asking for is stress management, you know, um, mental health and well-being. And so what we want to do is want to get Schmidt on here, uh, who's gone through one of our workshop series. I had an opportunity to teach Brandon to him, and he's going to talk about the work he does with Reset Studios. And then we're going to talk about um, how we can apply some of those lessons uh, today. So Schmidt, Without further ado, welcome to Office Hours. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. This is a topic that is very dear to me. So I'm, I'm hoping to get, provide some value through this process. Yeah. So let's start out by explaining to people what a Reset Studios is. Yeah. So Reset Studio is a stress management and emotional well-being company. And we teach people how to effectively manage stress, anxiety, as well as better their mood under three minutes by them simply using their senses. And they can do this anytime, anywhere. And we do this process through our product, which is our Reset Cards workshop, as well as a new app that we are developing, which is the Reset app. What led you into this kind of work? How did you get a, a, get a background in like stress management? Yeah. Uh, so that's very, very cool story. It, as you guys know, I'm a I'm an Army veteran. My unit was deployed to Katrina in 2005. And during that time, we did everything um, from uh, security to patrolling, setting checkpoints, as well as uh, building, um, I would say, showers as well, place for people to actually pick up food. But in our process, I used to drop food to this particular area where this older lady that I I grew fond of. But one thing is that after the water went down, um, there's certain smell that was around. And when I used to bring her food, the smell used to be very vivid, especially during the high, uh, high points of the sun, such as the middle of the day. Now, fast forward about five, six years later, I'm at a barbecue in Chicago. My friend is cooking and he had steak marinated in kimchi and a piece of that kimchi fell in the, on, in the fire. And that burnt smell took me back to the deployment. And I was frozen in time for a good three minutes. And it wasn't until my friend touched my shoulder and said, Schmidt, are you okay? 
that I realized that I was actually in Chicago. And it was a big moment for me because at that point, when I was started driving home, I was wondering, what about if I was driving or if I was doing something that required my attention? I could easily hurt myself as well as loved one. And as I started my graduate degree in exercise science and I started learning about neuroscience and motor control, I realized the power of our senses and how the senses can actually help us either make sense of things as well as help us evoke all different type of emotions and feelings. And I link that to what happened to me from a deployment and memorizing or internalizing a smell. And that smell, once I interacted with it again, it triggers these feelings and emotions. And that was the genesis of it. I'm like, how can I do this to help people de-stress and take control of their emotions and feelings? And that was the genesis of a Reset Studio. All right. So now let's start applying some of these lessons to entrepreneurship. I'm going to tell them myself, y'all. So anytime I hang out with my girlfriend in New York, I'm always thinking about all the stuff that I haven't got done in my venture, you know, and it's to the point to where it's almost like I have, I feel like an anxious sleeper now, you know, because it's like, I'm always like, I lay down and I already know what I got to get when the day comes ahead. I'm always, I'm always thinking about the stuff in the future and, and that I got to get done. And it's very, very hard for me to, to be present. Um, and so like, what advice do you give to, you know, entrepreneurs to like de-stress and, you know, relax? Absolutely. So one of the, that's the, basically the key pillar of what reset. So reset, uh, it's not that we didn't know how to spell. So it's spelled with two S's, right? So it's R E S S E T. And those are our pillars. The first pillar is R E S, which stands for reduce environmental stimuli. And the thing is for you specifically, as we talk about this, this scenario is that you need to find ways to reduce as much of the things around you that can trigger you to think of work. And I know sometimes that can be impossible, but the main thing is, is that maybe with your girlfriend, you, you create cues and scenarios, like you spend time in her perfume, like you, you embody the conversation, try to reduce the noise as much as possible. The second step is self-evaluating. And for you to self-evaluate is that once you feel, you know what, I'm thinking about this, then let's scale back. Let's bring myself back to this moment. And the more you can reduce the noise, the more you can focus on the present moment. And what we talked about earlier with the concept of the senses is that you can actually use your senses to bring you back to the present moment, either something that you are smelling, something that you are hearing, uh, paying attention to, tasting, or uh, touching. Those things can bring you back to the now. And the key is at this moment, if you're not worried about the past or concerned about the future, you can be present and literally reduce stress as much as you can. I got another one for you. Okay. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of content out there about how to de-stress when you're feeling overwhelmed. You know, somebody said do a brain dump, right? Okay. So I did a brain dump. I looked at all the stuff that was on that paper. I got stressed. I don't even like doing a brain dump because when I see all the stuff that's in my head, it stresses me out, you know? So now I find myself running from those kind of things, right? What are your thoughts on that and what advice would you give? So absolutely. So like brain dumping is another process, right? It's, it's still related to journaling right? and you got to be in the right mindset to do that. And after you brain dump, you need to then be able to evaluate what you have, right? And that's the thing, right? You did the first part, RES, right? You took your time, cut out the noise and start brain dumping, whatever, right? Without worrying about anything else. You are present. Now it's like, what do you do with this content next? How do you break it down? The main thing I always tell people is that this is these concepts that we use, right? Time, resources, attitude. Now take a little time to just cut out just a piece of it. Don't do all of it because it's overwhelming. Just take a little piece of it and then try to dissect that to your best ability. See what are the resources that I have available for me to accomplish this or to reduce this, to improve this, right? And then have the mindset or the attitude to be to be behind that, that you're going to accomplish it. You're going to give yourself a timing limit to do it and so on and so forth. But brain dumping is a great thing that people can do, right? The key is what to do afterwards. And that's what can become very overwhelming. So if that happens before you start looking at it or start processing it, reset again. Listen to your favorite song, which is another way to reset, right? And then go back to it and look at it from a different perspective. As long as you are still within it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to detach yourself from it so the key resetting is that pause that allows you to evaluate what you are 
one of the things I love about conversations like this is that you start to think as you're talking. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in the pre-show, one of the things I mentioned before about, you know, I'm sending out this newsletter, which is a meal, not a snack. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking that one of the reasons I probably struggle with that kind of stuff is because I treat it like a snack. You know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna do this brain dump. Let me get 15 minutes, you know, versus saying that like, hey, this might be like that Sunday morning thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got this block of time so you can kind of try to tack this thing instead of already being overwhelmed, doing this brain dump in the middle of a Tuesday or whatever, you know, and then now you're like, you've got a hundred things on this list that you need to prioritize. And oh, by the way, you're in the middle of the hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to stress management, one thing that I'm just kind of thinking about talking to you is creating the time and space to do it outside of the multitasking and the hustling. It's like, hey, this is this needs to be protected time. Absolutely. And a hundred percent. And the, the beauty about that is that at time, when a person goes through a brain dump, for instance, right, you need to still create time around how long you it will take you to brain dump. If you give yourself two hours, that's a, way too much time, right? Brain dump within three minutes. At reset, we use this time frame and everything that we do when it comes to reducing noise focus on the present moment is about three minutes. Anything more than that can become a little bit too much. So can you bring it up in three minutes? And after the three minutes, you need to stop. And that is the time management piece for entrepreneur. That's a big deal, right? How well can, how well can you manage your time? Because it's a problem when, especially now people are working from home, right? And because of that, they transitioning from the living room to the office and to the kitchen and time management and creating cutting out the bracket, creating solid barriers or uh, restriction could definitely help people. I'm only going to do this for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. Then I'm going to take a break and reset before I transition to the next thing. That's great because I think that's good for people that feel overwhelmed and just kind of like easing into it, you know, no Absolutely. different than reading 10 to 20 minutes a day, meditating yes. 10 minutes a day just to get started and then you can grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I want to shift topics and talk about with regards to mental stress and everything is obviously the events that have taken place in Afghanistan, the social climate it's caused and how it's affecting the veteran community. And, you know, for me personally, right, uh, you know, when I thought about, you know, last summer and the racial unrest surrounding the death of George Floyd as a black entrepreneur, it affected me. Absolutely. You know? And again, sync podcast studio, solo dolo, boom. Now you've got veterans all over the country that are scattered in the wild and they're watching on TV and social media and everything else, all the events that are taking place in Afghanistan. There's all this traffic going on on our social channels and it's triggering a lot of responses in people, myself mm -hmm. included, right? It took me back to walking patrol in Afghanistan and seeing all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, as you, as we start to think about how this is affecting the veteran entrepreneurial community, because now we've got the stress of entrepreneurship now we've got the stress of Afghanistan, everything that's going on, right? What are some tips and advice you would give to our community about navigating these challenging times? Yeah, and, and it's it's very challenging, especially how things are developing, right? The the climate itself and what's going on. And the, the main thing is at time we may need a break from the social media, from the information, because sometimes it's over it's overstimulating, it's overloading, and all these stimuli that are coming at you could be a problem. So one, we can, again, time management, manage your time or the time that you spend around these things, right? Give yourself a break. We can go from the concept of exercising, go for a run. Those things are important, right? Because regardless of what the external stressors or triggers are, at the end of the day, it will be manifesting in the physical body. You will feel it. Sometimes people feel it as form of tension. Sometimes people feel it as like anxiety, uh, twitching of the body, whatever it is. Use exercise as an expression of this outlet. That's one thing. The, the next thing is what you talk about, like resources, right? Use community that you can actually talk to about this process. Don't hold it in. Again, another way to expel it out of your body. Find a community uh, earlier. We talk about networking, right? Go to the, a networking event so you're not isolating at home playing this uh, record player in your head over and over again of all the different ways things could go right or wrong and what happened to the Marines. And so find friends that you can talk 
too about this. If you have a therapist or counselor, find other ways to do that. Things that do things that makes you happy at the same time. Because when you are dealing with all these stimuli, sometimes you, we know that it can be very affect. It can affect you personally and physiologically. The key is that physiological thing. Now, how stress over a long period of time becomes a problem. We're not talking about the short-term stress, the stress that you are looking at these things, that the events that happened over the past weeks, and you are dealing with them for days and weeks. Now, how do we cut that? Now, we, we know that you can talk to friends, you can meditate, use reset as a protocol. All these things are great ways. Now, the thing is, is adequate sleep. A lot of people are not looking at that way, right? Because if you are stressed, your body's overworking, right? What I mean by overworking is that your body's a little bit hot, your cortisol levels, hormone fluctuation are going on. Your body's not functioning at its best. So if you feel fatigued, tired, find times to rest. Uh, allow yourself to take a break throughout the time. Give yourself permission as an entrepreneur that's burning the candle at, at both ends. Sometimes just cut out uh, an hour just to take a nap. I don't know, you know if people like naps. I do. But like do that. Those things from exercise, proper sleep, find a community that can help you. Get yourself outdoors, expose yourself to the sun, get fresh air. All these physical components can allow you to deal with it more effectively. It's funny. Listening to you talk, you sound like my grandma. She <laughs> passed away. You know, she passed away a while ago. But, you know, all the old timers, right? Get out and get some sun. Yes. You know, stop, stop being up in that house all day. You know, get outside. Like you said, get some rest. Get some sleep. Why is it so hard for us to practice these most basic human existent things in this in this time we have now you know and it's crazy because you know everybody talks about america is the how do we say this right there's a lot of opportunity in america mm -hmm. right entrepreneurship there's so much opportunity out there but we're dying at an early age we're stressed out and then you travel overseas in places like afghanistan and it's like inshallah you know it's like hey when are we going when are they coming inshallah god willing whenever but us, we're like busy little bees, you know? Why is that? And I, I think it's the it's the culture, right? We all, America, again, I'm from Haiti, right? Coming to America is like the land of, of milk and honey. Because when you're here, you know that you're going to have the opportunity to, to be successful or do that. And I think because of that, you have this spectrum between people that are super wealthy or people that are doing extreme things and you can see it so vividly you want to do that so therefore you keep constantly working to meet the demands of paying rent bills trying to be an entrepreneur so you can actually retire properly all these things are forces you to constantly run over and over again and not giving yourself time and you have this stigma that if i am not busy then i'm lazy or i'm not taking care of myself and this is another social construct that we need to kind of like address, but that's for a different time. But the key is that those basic things at time make us feel lazy and adequate. So we constantly keep paving at the basement, trying or at the ground, trying to strike gold. And by doing that, we don't give ourselves enough rest. We, we don't exercise. We don't create relationships. We don't talk to people that care about us or share our passion with others because we are isolated. Like you talk about, you are in the office, no one's around you. Same thing, right? I'm at the office, work hard, but at times we just need to be able to do that. And I think unless we have a reminder like this podcast and the things that Bunker Labs is doing, the how veterans to communicate and have a conversation with each other or have podcasts like this that allows people to see or hear it, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to remind ourselves that we need to do this. Even if we have this, some people will listen. It's like, yes, I need to do this tomorrow. Three days later, because they get caught up again in that life thing, they may forget and they literally fall right back to the same contract. And so the goal is how do you create or hack your environment to make sure that you have triggers just like a trigger of a smell force me to go back to my deployment how can you have triggers around you that reminds you to reset reminds you to take a break reminds you to enjoy the moment reminds you to exercise and so on you know i'm guilty right i feel like again you talking to me it's i'm the guy that's like i gotta walk to my car let me put a podcast in and i'm like you know that's that's me um, but you're right. Like we don't have to squeeze every ounce of productivity. Like it's okay to be a little bit lazy. Now, what I want to do is we got a question from Matthew Madhat and he wants to know, do we need to take a break from the news or our phone 
when things get overwhelming? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the first pillar, reduce environmental stimuli. By environmental stimuli, I'm talking about anything that can shift you away from this present moment. Anything. I mean, we deal with 40 million bits of information every second based on literature, right? So because of that, if you can put the phone away for two hours or or put it away for a weekend, right? Have proper conversation. That will help. Stop looking at the news for a weekend. I know a lot of time we want to know what's going on in the world, right? It's important to some people and many of us, of course. But like taking a break from that information that sometimes that can be curated or sometimes that can trigger certain things based on our uh, biases, upbringing, so on, that allows you to relax. And those triggers, if you reduce them, then you don't have to be evoked by them for the time being. So that allows you to reset. Can you tell us about some of the common triggers you've seen? So uh, the triggers that I've seen right now is uh, I had clients that I was work that I worked with that were very triggered by the fact that the Taliban were parading around with U.S. Um, um, vehicles and tools and so on, right? And that was a big trigger for them, right? I had I have seen triggers in in regards to the Marines that have passed away, right? And those are triggers for me as well, right? But the thing is that people will take that trigger, which we if they don't self-evaluate, if they don't have a, a way to stop, right, this trigger, they take it into their relationship because they are upset about it, right? Yeah. Because they didn't detach from that trigger, they are still thinking about it. They go home and their spouse says something and they react without even realizing it's the trigger that started the whole entire cascade of emotional uh, chaos, Right, that forced their physiological system to upregulate to increase to a high cortisol process or glucocorticoid, which is another hormone process. And because of that, then they are short tempered, they are triggered, they are angry, they are they're not patient anymore with their children, their pets, uh, clients, whatever it may be. So, those are the things that's why it's important to do that. And those triggers can be anywhere, it could just be looking at you know what, depends on whatever your political stand is, you're like, I don't like this president. I prefer this president. And you see this person speak or wherever, that's triggers. Those are all triggers. You know what I mean? The simple thing that I say is that this is a question to everyone. Have you ever walked into a room and smelled the cologne or perfume of a ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend? And if that person was not nice to you, that breaked that person broke your heart, the moment that you smell it, you're like, oh my God, I remember so and so. This person was such a X, Y, and Z, W, Z, whatever, right? And sometimes you deal with it for minutes, hours, and sometimes even days, right? If that smell can do this, all the triggers from sound, sight, touch can really do a lot of damage. So, yeah, I was going to say, I know for me, um, I found out about the Marines getting killed on Afghan uh, in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and the sailor and the, the army sergeant, yes. um, staff sergeant, I think it was staff sergeant on Instagram. You know, and then I got angry. I went to throw my laptop at the wall and then I got emotional and I start getting teary eyed and crying. But then this is where the self-awareness comes. It's like, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling emotional? So then I start going, I'm a Marine still at the end of yes. the day. You know, I've walked the beat in Afghanistan. So I know those roads. And I started thinking to myself, I also know those Marines, even though I don't know them personally. We all know what it's like to be around junior enlisted, you know, those young, bright yes. faces, right? And so once I was able to kind of process all of that, because sometimes like I will feel for me personally, I feel guilty. It's like, why are you getting emotional? You you're not there, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, no, we're a tribe. You yes. know, and what happens to one of us affects all of us. And maybe Absolutely. sometimes we're naive to think that that's not going to be the case. But at least it was allowing me to understand, hey, where is this emotion coming oh, from? And is yes. it all right for me to be emotional? Yes. You know what? At, at Reset, we talk about this concept of a dashboard, which is a great concept of awareness. Like everyone, when you look at your car, there's a dashboard, especially if the car is a newer model. If anything is going on with the car, the car will tell you something is happening. If you need gas, the light will pop up, right? If you need, if you need to put air in the tire or you need to change oil, the light will pop up. Think about those feelings and emotions the same way. When there's a trigger in your environment that affects you, right, then the lights will pop up 
the feelings and emotion tells you there's a want, a need, a desire that needs to be met, that needs to be fulfilled. So therefore, this is why. But the key is after that is like, can I self-regulate enough to look at the need, the want, and then try to challenge myself to do it in a very productive way, not a maladaptive way. And this is where reset becomes so powerful in our pillars and moving things forward. So as we close out, I want to give you the, op- before we go on our book recommendations, because we do a book recommendation for every office hours, but I just want to give you this opportunity to talk to the bunker and just tell them, you know, any close remarks you would like to leave them with regards to stress management. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one major important thing about stress management is knowing that use your senses as a very, very effective way. Think about a, a smell, a sound that you know once you either smell it, it decompresses your body. Or once you listen to this music, it makes you feel so calm, right? Everyone has that type of sound, right? Or even comedy skit, right? You start laughing and enjoying yourself. It takes you away from whatever is going on and it forces you to be present. So one thing is use your senses. It's a very, very powerful thing. The next thing is that if you would love to use the concept of Reset or product is online at resetstudio.com. So you can go to the website. We I'll, I can put things on there for you. You can have discount as Bunker Lab as well as veterans uh, for the product. But the main, most important thing is we will be launching a beta test for all of, of you that would love to, to uh, participate in this beta test for our app. Our app actually provides you with over... Uh, 500 modalities that you can use to downregulate and manage stress. So if you'd like to be part of it, you can just send us a note at info at resetstudio.com, which is info at R-E-S-S-E-T studio.com. So that's one cool way to actually do that. But know that your senses are free. So use them as often as you can. Set up time to do it. Don't just do it when the triggers happen set up time in the day that you're going to do this. You know what? Twice a day for three minutes, I'm going to listen to something, have a great conversation with a friend and so on. Schmidt, man, thank you so much for being on, on office hours today. I'm going to ask you what book recommendation do you have for our viewers? Absolutely. I have several. I hope that's okay because Go ahead. this is a, be- a beautiful topic for me. One is um, why zebras don't have ulcers. It's by, uh, his name is uh, uh, Sapo. So Polsky, right? He, it's a great book. Why Zebra Don't Have Ulcers. The Body Keeps Score by Vender, Vender Kalk. Great book also. It really talks about this whole entire concept. And one other one is by John Lilly. And the name of the book is uh, The Center of the Cyclone. That one really talks about how to be in the moment. And if any of you listening out there, as well as you might ever use sensory deprivation, John Lilly is the inventor of sensory deprivation. I got to check those books out and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. Hopefully I can get Schmidt to commit to doing a guest post on uh, the transition newsletter. And then I got to get you on that podcast as well. So Sounds we can go good. a little bit more deeper because we only got a you know short time window here. So I would love to, to share uh, some, some knowledge on stress management for entrepreneurs uh, through our newsletter and pod, other podcast series. Sounds um, fantastic. What I'm going to do now is I got to plug this book, Passion, Purpose, Passion, Purpose, and Process, Passion, Purpose, and Profit, Sidestep the Hustle, and Build a Business You Love. Now, I'm a big proponent of people getting business coaches. It's like my number one advice when I give talk to entrepreneurs because I've seen the change it has for me. This book is like a business coach in a book, right? Um, She is a business coach, Fiona Kalaki. I just found her randomly through Instagram, not Instagram, but uh, listening to a podcast, checked out her book. And this is one of my favorite books. And if you're a small business owner and they're in the grind, in the hustle, get this book. You'll highly, I highly, highly recommend it. Literally, it is like having a companion as a business coach with you. And she also has a podcast called My Daily Business Coach, which is great as well. Um, Big thing I'll say about this is marketing and sales as we know, is always one of the challenges with regards to generating revenue. And she talks you through how to build up a really strong marketing channel uh, for small business owners. Um, it's called The Buyer's Cycle, I believe. Um, but just check it out. Highly, highly, highly recommend the book. And uh, yeah, check out her podcast, My Free Daily, My Daily Business Coach. A couple things before we go. 
I'm dropping a monster newsletter today on how to build a brand. As soon as I jump off this, I'm going to clean it up, make sure I don't have too many grammar errors. Y'all know I'm a grunt, so we can't write. Uh, but uh, hopefully you check that out. But make sure you also subscribe to the Transition Podcast um, on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast hosting platform, pushing out a lot of good content. There's no excuse for you all out there to feel like you're going at it alone. We're pushing out a lot of content that supports you and also drives you to some of the other resources. So just make sure you're taking um, advantage of that. We have a newsletter for the transition on Substack, which we'll put in the chat. So make sure you subscribe to that. And then I also have to acknowledge uh, our sponsors, which amount, which make these, uh, which make the podcast and office hours possible. And that's the MetLife Foundation and the Gannett Foundation. The MetLife Foundation is committed to supporting veteran and military spouse entrepreneurs. In addition, the foundation also provides mentorship and financial health resources to veterans and military spouses transitioning into the workforce. A Community Thrives is a program funded by the Gannett Foundation that's part of the USA Today Network, which invests in community building initiatives across the country with the goal of creating positive change through service to historically marginalized or under-resourced groups. Uh, thank you again, again, and the MetLife Foundation. And uh, make sure you all subscribe to the Transition Podcast um, at the link. Make sure you also visit BunkerLabs.org to learn about our many different programs and support for the veteran entrepreneur, veteran entrepreneur and military spouse community. Um, and we have programs that will take you from idea to invoice, incubate you, and position you to grow alongside other founders and CEOs. So make sure you're checking out BunkerLabs.org. Until next week. Oh, I forgot to plug. I got to make sure I plug Reset Studios. Um, so make sure you check out Schmid uh, at ATM and uh, Reset Studios. It was great having them on here. We'll be sure to put um, their link in the in the link. For now, just go to info at resetstudios.com um, if you're interested in being part of the Breda. So thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Until next week, peace, love, and have a great rest of your week.